Hey folks, Kevin here. Well, it's May 14th, 2021, and today's video is going to be uh, a, a couple of videos that I've shot with the GoPro cameras uh, mounted inside of the uh, Hound, which is Komatsu CK35-1 with a rock and grapple bucket uh, uh, attachment on it. And, uh, and this is an area that, I, that we've looked at in the past when I've, when I've shot some of the Who Culture uh, videos. And th what I'm trying to demonstrate in this video is A, some of the challenges we've had in our natural forest, not our food forest, but we have three different food forests, but we, our, our natural maple, uh, oak, uh, ash tree, uh, and a variety of other species as well. So we have this native force that has been neglected and has had multiple problems throughout the years. <clears throat> and I have worked in there in the past, but I've only been able to accomplish um, you know, small amounts of what I set out to do each year in that area. And with hound and the rock and, gr and grapple uh, attachment, rock and brush grapple attachment, I'm able to do much more. And with the backup camera, uh, screen, I'm able to uh, safely navigate in between all of the trees within the forest. Now, the area that uh, that I'll be standing in when I first shoot the shoot some of the video with my GoPro and my he helmet cam, and it's it's been tough shooting videos. We've had really high winds for uh, a few weeks, uh, light rain uh, just about every day. Now, yesterday, the last couple of days have been good. Today's going to be beautiful. This next week looks like it's going to be beautiful, and the temperatures are going up as well. But down in the area where I'm, where you will see me shooting. What I'm going to try and do is, one, explain some of the challenges that we have in our na native forest here. So one, we're on uh, basically bony gravel uh, soil and we're at a pretty high elevation relative to where the winds come out of the west. The, 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 to the west of us it's much lower in altitude and therefore we get really high winds. And there's, that's the reason why I'm trying to build all these living, one of the reasons I'm building the living fences. But when those winds come through, it can really create a lot of damage to uh, diseased and dysfunctional trees. And we have a fair number of diseased and dysfunctional trees because of a few different problems. One, we have a lot of white ash that's, that natively grew up on this, you know, uh, developed on this property. And we had the emerald ash boring insect uh, come through uh, almost two decade, decades ago that we first noticed it. And, uh, and what they did is they just went through all of the ash trees, almost all of them, and the larvae just go through and just go under the surface of the bark and they just eat all of the cambium layer and disrupt the, circulator the circulation system for the, uh, oak, for the uh, ash trees and therefore those ash trees die. And then we have those high winds or other issues, and I'll go over another issue in a moment, that really causes those trees to, to snap and break and fall. And so, uh, and each year I pick up, you know, uh, at least 50, sometimes 250 of these dead trees that have fallen or parts of the trees. And I've used the mini excavator, the Komatsu uh, PC um, 27 MR2 uh, uh, excavator. And I've used um, uh, Optimus Prime, which is our David Brown or Case 995 front end loader, just two wheel drive. And it's been lots of challenges. And one of the bigger challenges that we have is we have these native grapevines, which, you know, some of the, 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 uh, the vines themselves are this big around and they're very tortuous. And then when a part of a tree uh, that it's been up in the canopy of dies and some of the, the, the main limbs come down, that vine makes more contact with the ground and sends down more roots. So we have these gnarly messes uh, one vine may take up, uh, and some some areas in the f forest floor, uh, 50 feet by 50 feet square foot of the uh, not 50 feet by 50 feet running uh, linear feet in, on the ground because the vine has made contact, and that's sent up new shoots into the surrounding trees. So these grapevines are are you know uh, sometimes hundreds of feet long, and they're right up into the to the peak of the canopy. 
and uh, and they're just so tough it's hard to deal with. And when I use Optimus Prime, the Case 995 uh, with just two-wheel drive, direct drive, and all, and I'd hook onto it and I'd pull, and it just pull me back like a like a like a rubber band would. And then when I got the mini excavator, I'd be able to dig out some of the roots and I'd be able to chainsaw off some of the roots and then try and pull it down out of the canopy. But, you know, the, the mini excavator just couldn't uh, do, do very much. I may be working all day on half of one vine tied up into three different trees. Now that I've got Hound, uh, I discovered last season that I could hook onto it and that thing, 10,300 pounds uh, weight, with uh, the dirt, uh, the dirt bucket that I had, if I could hold on to that vine, it would it would rip it right out of the trees. So that's one of the reasons I br I purchased the uh, the prime attachment rock and brush grapple because I knew I could pinch it uh, between the uh, half inch thick uh, steel on it and rip rip some of those buggers out of the out of the uh, the, the canopy. And of course, it's pretty dangerous in there using other pieces of equipment because you need to have an enclosure, you know, a, you know the, the ROPs and the FOPs. The ROPs are the rollover protection, so when a, when a tractor rolls over, your, the tractor doesn't crush the, the, uh, the driver. And the FOPs are the fall-on protection, so when those, uh, the top of a tree, of a dead tree, comes down on you, yes, it scares the, the, the dickens out of you but you don't end up getting killed uh, as a result. So with Hound, I feel much more comfortable going in there and getting a lot of that material out. The other thing is, yes, those vines, as I tear them out and I'm making these huge piles, I'm not burning them. Many years ago, I used to make big brush piles and burn them. Then as I learned how well we can use all of the weeds, the vines, the dead trees and all, and stack them up and put a little soil over the surface of them, that we're creating great soil within about eight years. Uh, most of the logs and materials are broken down. And I've made videos about that, about the large hugelkultur systems. And a hugelkultur system is nothing more than taking woody material and covering it up with soil and you can plant into it. And uh, we just don't need to plant into it uh, to get that material to break down. And therefore, we're not putting that CO2 into the atmosphere and we're able to take that soil and use it. Now the location that I'm that I'm that I'm putting this material in was an er area where we had done that previously, and we had taken all that soil out of there, and I used it for the access road with the beaver dam, and then there was a big stone pile, uh, and these old farm sites, you know, hundreds of years ago, people used to just make big piles or make stone walls, and so that they could do farming. And so there was a big stone pile there. I moved that stone pile out and I used it for building the access road for the, around the beaver dams. So now we have this really steep slope going downhill. So I figured what I'd do is do a terraced, in a sense, uh, hugelkultur system like I've done before in previous videos. But in this case, doing it in, in, in a woodlot area. And yes, I will lose some of the trees that are in that woodlot area because some of them, uh, the ground level will be eight, eight feet above the, the root crown. But I'm, I'm, I'm going to sacrifice some of those trees so I can get save so many other trees and we can get more trees planted. Now, this is going to take me quite some time working in this forested area because as a result of limbs coming down and vines uh, pulling on them when, when the winds, strong, <laughs> winds come and all, uh, you know, many of the... Uh, the um, the single trunks that have come up have been damaged and there are multiple trunks coming up. So lots of ch ch chances for damage and dysfunction as a result of this. So I've got lots of, of um, uh, pruning to do in the forest of some of these ones. You know, this, some of the, the trunks are pretty darn large and I'll use it for firewood as well. So this is going to be a relatively long video. <clears throat> there is going to be some uh, music at the end of it with, without my narration. I just don't have time to sit down in front of a computer and spend too much time really editing these videos so that they're optimal. But hopefully you'll be able to see some of the, the, uh, the sped up uh, time lapse video that, that, of me on the, on the equipment moving some of the material. I shot, shot some yesterday. You'll be able to see me attacking some of the vines. And, uh, and I put in an access road already so I can get through the area without damaging the rest of the trunks as well. 
So without any further ado, we'll cut to the, to the video that I have put together over the last couple weeks here. And if you have any comments or questions, please leave them below. The whole thing is here is dealing with the problems, the ice storms the, uh, that we have that really damage a lot of our trees. We're on you know, basically a gravel bed type base that we're on. And so therefore there isn't a lot of good deep rich soil in the area. And we have these high winds in this area. And then we had the emerald ash boring insect that damaged all of those white ash trees. And they're all uh, falling down year after year. Uh, and I need to get, get some of those taken down so that they don't come down and damage another good tree. So uh, I guess that's about it. And taking all that waste and turning it into beautiful soil, not burning it and putting it up in the atmosphere. So we're doing something well for the environment, doing something well for the forest here, and doing some cleaning up, making it a little bit safer for all of us to work in. Thanks so much for watching, folks, and I hope you enjoy the video. Bye-bye now. So I'm out here in the uh, forested area. And the last couple of weeks I've been out here working in various parts of the forest. And uh, this is all natural forest. And there are several challenges that we have in our forest area. And I thought I'd show you one that's really been a big problem for me for years. So one problem is uh, we have lots and lots of ash trees in here. and these. White ash are susceptible to the emerald ash boring insect, which the larvae uh, chew through the cambium layer of the uh, of the trees. And in this area, I have worked for a few years using bumblebee Optimus Prime. So bumblebee is the is the uh, mini excavator. It's a Komatsu PC 27 MR2. And Optimus Prime, Prime is my front-end loader, two-wheel drive. Uh, geez, it's over 40 years old. It is a uh, David Brown or Case 995. And I have been able to come down and pick up many of these uh, trees that, uh, that get blown over in the wind. So we have really high winds, but in the forested area here, the winds are much better. And lately we've had some really high winds. But I have lots of dead trees that I still have to get down. Uh, but here's one of the, the problems that we've had for years are these wild grapevines. And they're just all over the place. And this is one of the things I've been working on this week. Now in the past, I used the Case 995 Optimus Prime to hook onto these. Now some of these vines are six inches thick. Here's some more over here. And they, they climb up all of these trees and they entangle uh, you know you would think of a Tarzan movie but these grapevines are just something else so here's a pretty good size and when they touch ground they send down more roots and they get tangled up in all of the trees throughout all of our forest area here and when we have high winds and we have dead ash trees. They fall into these or fall into the whole cobweb in a sense and create quite a nightmare. So it is, it has been uh, very, very, very challenging and it's been very destructive in our forest. So we have lots of trees that are multi trunk because either our severe ice storms that we get, probably about every 20 years we get a really severe ice storm which really snaps off and, and does lots of damage to the trees. Then we had the emerald ash boring insect come in and wipe out probably maybe about one quarter of our forest was uh, ash trees. And uh, so here you can see some more vines here. And in the past, uh, I would uh, use Optimus Prime, the, the two wheel drive um, front end loader, hook onto these, 
and I'd wrap chains around them. I'd use brush grabbers, hook onto them, and take off like a bat out of heck. And uh, what would end up happening would be that the tractor would just get slingshotted. It'd be like a hooked onto a big rubber band. It'd pull my tractor right backwards and pick the rear end right off the ground. And of course, that tractor doesn't have ROPs or FOPs, so rollover protection or fall on protection. So it was always quite dangerous. And so this, you can see just, I've been working at this for the last, oh, last fall I started working on it some, once I got uh, Hound. And that's the Komatsu track loader. And I discovered that that machine being 10,300 pounds, I could hook onto these, but I'd have to get out and uh, hook onto them and, and hook onto the to the back of the of the tree of, of the uh, of the track loader. And so you can see this just creates the whole canopy is just tied together. And uh, so it's a super challenge taking care of these. So last fall, as the snow was fall, well, last winter, as the snow was falling, I took delivery of the grapple. I've got a prime attachment grapple on the front of the track loader, which has a skid steer attachment. And uh, I said, well, if this machine's powerful enough, that grapple, I'll probably be able to grab a hold of some of these vines and pull them down and of course this track loader is quite heavy duty I don't know you can see there's just tons and we have a beautiful maple that we have lots and lots of these vines all of these these trees have been falling one after another and just entangled with all these vines so it's just it's throughout our whole forest so we have the emerald ash boring insect these terrible uh, native uh, grapevines that just hook into everything and you get hooked onto these and it's a real hassle so this last couple oh the other thing that's a big hassle is the these intermittent about every 20 years these uh, ice storms that we get so you look at these vines you say my goodness and you see it's throwing roots down all the way around this whole area here it's just all re-roots as, as they come down. As the trees come down, these, these just send up more and more roots. So this has been a real challenge. Beautiful cherry right here. So these last couple of weeks, since I've had the grapple on the uh, track loader, I've been able to come down here into the forest and take this material and start to create another hugel culture system. Now I made videos in the past, and now when we talk about hugel culture, we're talking about taking dirt or compost or soil or wood chips and covering up logs and all. So trees that, that have fallen, uh, trees that you've cut down and you're not gonna use for firewood or whatever, or, and what I used to do quite a few years ago is when I'd clear an area, I'd clear a spot and build a big brush pile and burn the material. Then, you know, I ultimately learned the value of not putting this carbon back into the atmosphere and actually taking this material and piling it up, putting some dirt on top of it and giving it time. So if you go back and look at the videos that I made last, when was it, last, last summer, when I was building the access roads around the beaver dams, you saw that there were large piles of rocks and that's another thing we have. So around here, there are many large piles of rocks, several big ones, and I've already taken all of those out well, not all of them, but I've been removing the piles of rocks as I discover them in, in amongst the, all of this stuff. And I take that material and I built the, the dam uh, access roads along with using the material from, the, from uh, stumps, from tr tree trunks and branches and all, putting that all down. But another thing I did use was 
the soil that had been created from large piles that when we dug the ponds years ago we cr cr took a lot of the brush and trees and root balls that we weren't using in a hula culture system up above we had excess 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 uh, woody material we made some big windrows down here and I just kept adding to it each year and last year I took a lot of that that earth that soil that had, which, which was broken down uh, woody material that was right up over in here and I dug that material out and used it for the excess roads so right up over in here I'm building a new culture mound that's on a very steep slope so we'll go over here for a second now the soil and the stone pile the stone pile if you go back and look at the excess road videos that I was building for the beaver dam there was a large stone pile right here and before getting to that stone pile there was a large culture mound that was oh probably around 2010 that I put all of the woody material here and then build up dirt on top of it so there was just a narrow path for me to be able to get through so I dug that out and then used all the soil from all the woody material that had broken down from here then I took out the stone pile here and this was just a steep drop off if I go around to the side but oh, here's some of the material so here's lots and lots of the dead tree material that's been down grapevines and it's just tons of it underneath here now all of this stuff will reroute but my goal here is to take all of this organic material whether it's noxious weeds like <laughs> these grapevines and here's another small one here next to this these two cherries and I keep as I clean up the forest of course these are trees that came down in the last windstorm as I clean up the forest all of that material comes down and I just keep making a gradual slope coming down here will I lose some of these trees yes because I'll be uh, basically volcano uh, mulching around some of these trees but eventually I, all of this area will be replanted again but instead of putting all this stuff in a big burning pile I'm using it to create more soil gradually build more and more soil and then we'll replant on top of all of these areas so I don't know if I've already shown some video footage of me using the grapple on hound to grab and pull down so many of these vines but it has worked out extremely well and of course once one of these trees uh, is damaged so this was initially a single trunk tree coming up here and that trunk got damaged and these were all basically like water sprouts or suckers that came up and we get these messes that really cannot that that, that pose more of a risk uh to 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 the property so there are there's one r nice cherry in there unfortunately but uh we're gonna just work our way down gradually with grabbing all these vines and a lot of the dead wood off the forest floor and the soil that i'm picking up along the way i just keep building up over here a few weeks uh well two weeks ago well during this past 2020 season I talked about I made a video about how long does it take for the wood to decompose in a huge hugelkultur system and uh, it was about eight years in the making to get that turned into beautiful soil which I left over there but there were a couple of big logs that I put in to, put on top of a large hugelkultur mound that was on this side of those trees right there 
and I had a large pile right here that came to about where I'm standing now and it was like a big wind row and I built it along the north-south line here so that the winds out of the west wouldn't be have as much of an issue with it and it created more habitat on this side for the wildlife but uh, what I did do most of that had broken down into beautiful soil so I took that I took the woody material that was here and I started off the edge putting that on down the slope the soil that uh, that had broke the woody material that had turned into beautiful soil I took and that's what I covered up the wood as I went down the slope over there so that's what I've been doing I've been gradually working trying to break my way through and either break off the vines as some of those snapped or grabbing the, them and ripping them out of the trees as much as possible it'll take several years to clear up to clean up these these areas but uh, eventually these areas will improve and we'll be able to re replant many, many uh, trees down in here as well. But there's a lot of trees that are multi, uh, multi-trunked, almost bush-like trees, and those aren't gonna do as well. Uh, gradually be harvesting those as we, it, it, as long as they're still viable, I'll keep them for now. But I've got to concentrate on all the d dead and diseased and dying trees that are there. And also the grapevines, get those out of the area. So that's one of the jobs I've been working with, uh, working on down here. And uh, these, n these nice grapple, uh, prime attachment uh, grapples, which this grapple, there are many different types of grapples. But this is a rock and brush, a very heavy duty grapple that mounts on the front of the track loader. And with such a heavy track loader and with uh, being inside of a shell that's much more protective, uh, I feel pretty confident being able to, to grab a hold of those things and just give them one heck of a tug. And believe me, it can make those tracks spin when it's tied up into several of the, uh, of the trees up in the upper canopy. But it's been pretty good as far as pulling down lots of material. Does it do some damage to the trees? Yes. Would it be great to have an arborist get up in these trees and start cutting them out? Yes. But uh, this is, is the technique that I've been using so far. So if you have any comments or questions, please leave them below. If you found this video of value, give us a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And it's always valuable if you can click that like button, more people will get to see the videos as well. Thanks so much, folks, and have a great day. Bye-bye now.